Welcome to the Homeschool Mama Self-Care Podcast. I'm Teresa Wiedrich, Homeschool Life Coach at Capturing the Charmed Life. I'm dedicating this season of the Homeschool Mama Self-Care Podcast to the overwhelmed homeschool mama, because you'd rather be clear, confident, and satisfied in your homeschool and life, not overwhelmed. This episode is for you if you're looking for a good book to add to your reading stack because I'm going to offer you a book that is not only encouraging, but hilarious. Kara S. Anderson is the author of More Than Enough, Grow Your Confidence, Banish Burnout, and Love Your Homeschool Life. On today's episode, I'm going to share with you five things that I've gained from her book, More Than Enough. This is one of the most common comments that I hear from homeschool moms that are just a little bit uncertain about what they're doing. They're uncertain because they're not sure it's enough. If that's you, I can guarantee you, you are not the first, you will not be the last, and neither are Kara and I, but Kara has some amazing insights and hilarious insights to offer us in her book, More Than Enough, Grow Your Confidence, Banish Burnout, and Love Your Homeschool Life. And not coincidentally, this is the beautiful book offering for October's Homeschool Mama Book Club. And you are invited. So if you're listening to this podcast before the event, the event that is on October 27th, that's a Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, then you are warmly invited. So if you're needing a little bolster of encouragement and want to be reminded that you are enough, this podcast episode is for you. Welcome, Homeschool Mama. Let's chat how Kara S. Anderson informs my homeschool through her book, More Than Enough, Grow Your Confidence, Banish Burnout, and Love Your Homeschool Life. So how does Kara's book fuel me with confidence and joy to keep going? Here's how. First, Kara is so dang funny. She knows this homeschool lifestyle like the stand-up comedian alter ego that is inside of her. And also that nurturing mama that's also inside of her. That nurturing mama that's been there for her three kiddos all these years. There are so many tidbits from this book that I would love to share with you. I chose five. So I'm going to share with you five different things that she shares in her book that have helped to inform my homeschool. The first is this. Kara writes, it's okay to take what works from a philosophy and hold on to that and leave the rest. Kara's story about tucking her TV in the closet in favor of the Waldorf lifestyle is a classic reflection of most homeschools in their earlier days. We want to recreate whatever perfect, lovely homeschool philosophy we've discovered so that we can make our homeschool the best homeschool ever. If we fall in love with Charlotte Mason, we're heading to the nature reserve, pulling out the drawing books, bringing the trail guides, coming home to research leaves and trees and birds and scat. If we fall in love with Susan Wise Bauer's approach, the classical homeschool, We find the Latina Christiana curriculum online, have it FedEx to our home to discover we don't know anything about Latin. And we'll sprinkle in a few more languages along the way, of course. We'll do math, but we'll supplement with a logic course, mental math puzzles, chess games, a personal finance course, and heck, also an entrepreneurial for homeschool kids course, because every young teenager needs their own business. If we fall in love with unschooling, we won't buy any curriculum. And we'll spurn homeschool conversations about curriculum. Heck, we won't even self-identify with the word homeschool. We'll rather borrow anything we need from the library, throw it around our house in hopes that our kids will fall in love with whatever latest borrow we have strewed upon our home so they can go down their deep rabbit holes. Dare they ask for a textbook, request an essay writing course, or any routine whatsoever. P.S. I have been a little bit 
of all of these. What I've learned is that we can commit to a homeschool philosophy, but is that commitment serving our kids? Because if it's not, it's time to rethink our choices. The second thing that I learned from Kara, as she admonishes, is this. Please do not waste your one precious life trying to be someone else. One thing I did not expect to learn in my homeschool years is this. How much I allow myself to be me is how much I allow my kids to be them. And though we all want our kids to be themselves, we don't allow them to be themselves when we want them to be like us or whatever idealized version of what we think they should be is. For so many reasons, we struggle to see ourselves clearly. There might have been a challenging moment in our childhood that colored our perspective on who we are. We may have lost a connection with someone important, and that loss might have interfered with our sense of a secure self. We may have plummeted into postpartum depression. We might have had to make a significant move or we've separated from a partner and lost our sense of who we are, our identity, or we've come to the end of a friendship and that's changed our community. So many possible reasons, but you've got one life. So what are you doing with that one life? Are you doing your thing? Are you trying to be someone other than who you are? because you like how someone else shows up or how they look or what they do or how they do it or how much money they have to do it. As Kara admonishes, please don't waste your one precious life trying to be someone else. Allow yourself to be you. And not only will you encourage you to be more you, but you'll encourage your kids to be more them too. The third thing that I hear from Kara is that she encourages us in this. One of the greatest gifts we can give others is to accept others as they are. And if we're not wasting our one precious life trying to be someone else, we give ourselves space to be who we are. But do you know who you are? This homeschool mothering lifestyle can be all consuming. We spend so many years addressing other people's needs and paying attention to everyone else but ourselves that we get lost when they leave. And turns out they do leave. To be clear, I've only had half my lot leave home, two out of the four. But girlfriend, that is enough for me to have a hefty reminder that they won't all be staying. If we don't eke out time for ourselves regularly without the kids and outside homeschool activities, We might one day walk back into our house after having delivered our last child to the college dorm or their one-bedroom studio apartment and spend weeks sitting in our clean home. Shoes might be lined up tightly in the mudroom and they don't move. There's no dishes left unwashed in the sink, no fingerprints on the windows. All the cookies are still in the box of cookies. Well, until you remember that they're there. And we'll wonder if we need to walk to the neighbor's house and ask if their kids need homeschooling. So the moral of the story is if you don't want to homeschool the neighbor's kids, you better figure out what you need and figure out who you are now. I'm interrupting this episode to invite you to the Homeschool Mama Book Club. Did you know that I offer a monthly book club? I believe that we need to be intentional in who we choose as influencers in our homeschools. Oftentimes we overlook the authors in our homeschools. Of course, I believe that the greatest influencer is you. What you allow yourself to think and consider influences how you feel, which influences how you act and engage and show up in your homeschool. And you want to show up in your homeschool intentionally. 
This Homeschool Mama Book Club is a book club focused on books that can help to influence how we think about our homeschools or how we're showing up in our homeschools. You can read the book in advance or don't. If you don't have time, don't worry, because I will be reading the book for sure, and I will be bringing three to five insights from each of the books that we can have a discussion on. I'm eager to listen to your insights on those books as well. Some of the books that we have discussed in the past, the most recent one was Alison Gopnik's The Gardener and the Carpenter. We talked about Marie Forleo's Everything is Figureoutable, Brene Brown's Atlas of the Heart, Gordon Neufeldt's Hold On to Your Kids, Sarah Susanka's Not So Big Life, obviously Julie Bogart's Raising Critical Thinkers, and Marshall Rosenberg's Nonviolent Communication. When you sign up to the book club, you will receive the Zoom link in your email the morning of our book club. Make sure that your email provider hasn't thrown it into the junk mail. You can purchase the book through my Amazon bookshop, When you purchase here, you support me. The book club costs a nominal $5 purchase, which helps enable the Zoom group platform. Oh, and it costs you some time too. You'll need to find a quiet hour and a half away from the kids and all your responsibilities to spend time on you. I'll share my insights from the book and how they apply to our homeschools as I see it. But the best part of the book club you sharing your thoughts and how it applies to your homeschool. So if you have thoughts, insights, or questions, I definitely want to hear them. If you're interested in joining the Homeschool Mama Book Club for a year, you'll receive it at a reduced price. You can check out the Homeschool Mama Book Club on my website, capturingthecharmlife.com. Now back to the episode. The fourth thing Kara says... Essentialism is a practice. It's something we work on each day. We say no to mummifying a chicken because it might help us study ancient Egypt, but we don't have $10 to spend on a chicken that no one can eat. She also says the key is to make decisions that make sense for your family and to realize that because you can't do it all, you must constantly make trade-offs. A yes to one thing equals a no to something else. Otherwise, you find yourself doggy paddling in the deep end with no clear way out of the pool. We have to continually prioritize the most important things. Sometimes the most important things are to connect at a homeschool co-op, to build community and friendships, even though the homeschool co-op isn't offering the most interesting electives for our kids. Sometimes the most important thing is to find a community college class for a high school homeschool student to help her transition into a schooled mindset, since she's afraid to go to a full-fledged college program when she's spent her childhood in her unschooled environment. Sometimes we decide to purchase the pretty nature cards so we can memorize plant families for a Charlotte Mason Spring curriculum because Mama loves Charlotte Mason. Sometimes we need to let go of a curriculum idea because we need to set aside money to purchase soccer cleats for the rising family athlete. Sometimes we hear of a local co-op or a ski club offering homeschool family entry prices. And though we want our kids to know how to downhill ski, we don't have the time to drive to the ski hill twice a week. Sometimes we want to amuse our extroverted child with every playdate whim, but we don't have the energy to make friends with every parent of every child that our extroverted child meets on the playground. We have to decide what's priority in the moment and what might be priority now might not be priority in three years or maybe even two months but we have to decide what's priority right now. And lastly, Kara shares that our job is inherently different than that of a teacher in a traditional school. So let's break out of the mental shackles and embrace the freedom that homeschooling offers. Homeschooling is hard work, but we make it harder when we try to measure up to standards that weren't meant for us to follow. Amen, sister. 
bringing the school into our homes and learning to let go of school in our home is mostly every homeschool mom's rite of passage. Give it a year or three or give it two decades, but eventually homeschool mom is going to learn that her home is not a school. I personally don't care for the word homeschool, by the way. For years, I've written on my website, capturingthecharmlife.com, and every time I referred to this homeschool lifestyle, I called it home education, because most of the time we were home educating. Now that I come to think of it, we were also community educating in homeschool co-ops, part-time jobs, community college classes, even using the local public high school. And since we traveled for seven years off and on, we were also world educating. We were also minivan educating as we drove back and forth between our home and the symphony music school for violin lessons or voice training or to the newspaper route. I used the minivan because I signed up to do it with a non-walking baby, a preschooler, a six-year-old and an eight-year-old for my, I should say, my child. No, no, let's say my first newspaper route. If we had a hard day, we would jump into the minivan and play the French weather network as we drove. French class? We drove to piano lessons, soccer practice, theater practice, curling bond spiels, baseball, tennis lessons, swim lessons, field trips, and chess club. I know I'm missing something. Naturally, we drove back home between the grocery store, recycling, the mailbox, the bank, over and over and over. And all the while, we had a DVD playing, the story of the world, the geography song CD, the French CD, anything Jim Weiss, an audiobook, a podcast, or we discussed current affairs or played debate. We were debating silly things for fun. Come to think of it, why do we say homeschool? Most of us probably should say we minivan schooled. An education is not confined to a school. And as most homeschool moms discover, bringing a school into the home is a really bad idea. We simply cannot do a school in our home. We can't do everything with peace and presence and joy. As finite beings who have a start date and an end date, we have an opportunity to do a whole bunch of stuff in between those dates but we only have a certain number of days and a certain number of years to homeschool our kids. So what do you want to do in your homeschool years? And what do you hope to ultimately enable for your homeschool kids? I want to help my kids discover why they're here, why they're specifically here. We don't need to make homeschool harder than it needs to be. We need to tailor the homeschool to each of the members of our homeschool. Kara says it as I see it. Our job is inherently different than that of a teacher in a traditional school. Homeschooling is hard work, but we make it harder when we try to measure up to standards that weren't meant for us to follow. I'm grateful for how Kara Anderson informs my homeschool as she teaches me not to take myself so seriously, to focus on the most important things and live my homeschool life on purpose. Thank you, Kara. Thanks for joining me today. I'd love to hear your thoughts or questions, so head over to capturingthecharmlife.com and introduce yourself. If you're looking to enhance your homeschool community with other supportive, authentic homeschool moms who want to show up on purpose in their homeschools and lives, then you're invited to the Homeschool Mama Patreon support group. This month, we get to talk with Kara about her book, More Than Enough, in our support group. So bring all your questions and thoughts. You can find the Patreon support group at patreon.com slash homeschool mama self care. Until next week, I hope that you and your homeschool kids can turn your homeschool challenges into your homeschool charms. You got this, girlfriend.